Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, wanted to remind you we're recording this. We'll post the video on YouTube and Odyssey. Um, and we'll have a Q&A, but really, because we're a small group and the nature of this, we're not going to have a presentation and then Q&A. Um, it's going to be more discussion style. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions as we go along. We want it to be conversational. Um, and our guest today is Tony Olson, the founder of Freedom Haven. We will be talking about his experience at Porkfest this summer, promoting his seasteading projects among libertarians at Porkfest. Welcome, Tony. Thanks for having me. So we'll get started. We're gonna have a short video in, um, intro to the Freedom Haven pro project, although um, we also have a podcast interview from about two years ago with Tony, and I'll share the link to that. If you haven't listened to it, we talk more in depth about Freedom Haven specifically, and, and Tony, maybe during this conversation, if there, things have changed dramatically in the last two years, we can update that. So, um, all right, so I'm going to share and play this intro video. All right. Freedom Haven in 90 seconds or less. We don't want to pay taxes, and we wish to do whatever we want as long as we don't threaten the life, freedom, or property of others. We seek a level of freedom not found in any country on earth today, but thanks to the countries that signed the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, this freedom is found on the high seas outside of the exclusive economic zone. Many people, ranging from the working class to the wealthy, already live their lives on the high seas with established, tried, and tested technologies in various industries. Shipyards, like Samsung Heavy Industries, are already mass-producing new instances of such megastructures on a monthly basis. We know what living on such megastructures on the high seas looks like, we know how much that space costs today, and we know which locations on the high seas would be the most desirable. But the existing industries that utilize these megastructures are fulfilling specific goals that don't align with ours. Their implementations fail to preserve the freedoms we seek, are not optimized for lower cost of living, and fail to integrate a local thriving free market into existing global trade routes. We have designed a mega structure that fulfills all of these requirements. By dividing the cost into individually leased spaces, we can place this mega structure in the reach of almost everyone while preserving the freedoms that we seek. We have a financial plan for getting there. Come join us on Facebook and support our efforts through Patreon. All right. So Tony, I want to ask you to flesh out a bit about the Freedom Haven project. Um, so we saw a broad overview there, but as far as like the living space is, um, when I first talked to you, you were talking about um, Freedom Haven as a community on a container ship. Is that still accurate? Uh, it's 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 an, it's it's a new structure. It it's it combines a container ship and a cruise ship. So basically, basically people going on the ship will not recognize it as a container ship. Um, but all the offices will be modular and you can pull them in and out and they're like, like tiny homes. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, that the container itself is, is, is seen kind of like as the global trash can. It's like, oh my goodness, it's a container. But what it really is, is it's an engineering marvel that it, could, it, it, it is the corrugated steel and as, as wide as it is, is optimized to be able to be modular and have so much weight that it can carry both in itself and also above it. So it's the best way to actually have uh, modular, mo modular structures, especially because you can make your home or your office or your business in whatever country you're at and just have it shipped out and it'll be there waiting for you as long as the hookups are, are there. They'll have like RV style hookups with um, all the uh, utilities that you need. Um, so, but, but the people who are actually on it, won't say, oh, look, I see these containers. Now I need to crawl into one. No, it's not like that at all. It'll be, it'll, it'll be just like you're on a container ship. Um, the, the layout of the container ship would be, the layout of the ship would be pretty different from a container ship because the hallways are much bigger. We have all the utilities there and stuff. So it's not just, yes, it was, it's a lot of similarities with a container ship and with a cruise ship. It's kind of a hybrid of both. You can live on a cruise ship for about $100,000 a year. Um, you'll be able to live on Freedom Haven for about, Twenty thousand or ten thousand dollars a year. So, and so this the living space I imagine will be a little bit. Uh, it'll be more space for living space. I'm imagining, and in the containers that you're leasing on Freedom Haven, will you have access to kitchen and and other? Because I know on a cruise ship they don't want their guests cooking in this in the 
in their yes. suite rooms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Satoshi, that was a, that was that was unfortunate. <laughs> um, the yeah, that they they can do it, 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 they they'll have full businesses and industries running here. They, they have manufacturing running there. There will be certain um, uh, rules that the vessel will maintain uh, for the safety of the people next to it. For example, if you have anything that's explosive, that that explosive that that explosive yield cannot be large enough to penetrate your container and a container next to yours. But as long as it's within that, you go ahead and take whatever risk you want and put your life in whatever danger you choose for yourself as long as you don't put your neighbors in danger. And if that yield is greater than that, then you'd have to work with us. We have to make sure that safety safety measures are in place, or maybe we actually put that outside of the vessel itself, because we'll have a, a huge uh, plateau space outside the vessel as, as, as well, which would be better for anything that's dangerous. Um, but they'll have a huge mixture. And it's a, it's a free market, which means it will not be centrally planned. You won't say, well, you know, here's this zone and here's that zone. It'll be all intermixed in this glorious chaos of a free market. It'd be amazing. We're actually pretty similar to Porkfest, except that Porkfest was just kind of a simulation of it. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, so we had a question in the chat. Um, how wide are the corridors in feet and in meters? Oh, man. We, we had built that like two years ago. I think the corridors are a little bit shy of three meters wide. And, um, okay, Feet high, it's nine and a half feet, but that includes about one feet. So basically eight and a half feet of clearance because the feet above that is going to be all uh, utility pipes, uh, vents, and everything else. So you'll have that space above it that's going to be industrial um, cables and stuff. Um, but eight and a half feet is, is the clearance above you and about a little less than, about, I think it was like 2.7 meters, if I remember correctly, wide. All the plans are online and free, free for the download. Everything is open design, so you can look at everything yourself. And if that ends up being too small, we can always make it wider. Cool. You have to try to find the right balance between space usage. Sure. And then uh, how do you expect to handle fires? Will you have a fire crew? Uh, yes. Yeah, we'll have a full-time crew of about 20 people. And like on a container ship, they will uh, wear multiple hats. Uh, we'll have fire drills. We'll have... Uh, uh, just like on a cruise ship where you have a drill, what happens if uh, a pirate ship uh, tries to invade, which we don't imagine once we show that we can defend ourselves, we doubt that anyone actually do that. But if they actually did, we still prepared for it. We'll have drills anyways, and we'll have all the equipment there as well, as well as the fact that we'll have pumped water to each of the cabins with uh, uh, fire extinguishers and stuff. So, And that's going to be something different. That's going to be something different from a container ship. A container ship, these things are isolated. So if you have a fire in one of those containers, those spread more quickly because there's nothing to put out the fire until you have the firemen actually show up there. This is gonna be like a, an actual normal building where if everything goes right, the fire is put out before you even realize that there was a fire alarm that went off. Mm -hmm. You know, a halogen will be used for like computers and stuff because you don't want to read electronics, but you know, same stuff you have in buildings today. Cool. And do you expect the crew will all speak the same language? Um, that's kind of up for, um, we imagine English will probably be the primary language, but that really depends on the, the, the passengers. It depends on the, the, the people who actually end up living there. If it turns out that this ends up getting, being really big and like people in Hong Kong and 80% of the people are from Hong Kong, well, we're gonna be speaking Cantonese. You know, <laughs> if it ends up being something that's really big in India, then we'll be speaking, um, not Indian, sorry. <laughs> I just offended someone. Sorry about that. <laughs> I knew what it was. There's a, they have like a dozen different languages, but I knew the main ones. Um, so it's whatever whatever the people are speaking, whatever makes the most sense for that. And 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 like a good free market, we will conform to whatever the consumers want the most. But we suspect English will probably be the primary language. In that case, yes, they'll probably all just speak English. Sure. And so I saw on your website you have six phases for development. Do you want to just run through quickly those six phases? Uh, four, four phases, yeah. Um, the the first, and, and they're all progressively. They all, they all get progressively larger. The first phase was the initial design and plan. Um, we spent four years going through different concepts, um, uh, designs, figuring out how much they would cost at a high level estimate. And um, we, we, we learned a lot and ended up coming full circle back to basically what the industry is already producing today. I mean, we started out with all these grand designs of, you know, 
what if we did this and oh, the whole things we made out this, whatever. And then we, we ended up realizing that it costs more, it's heavier. There's a reason why the industry doesn't use these technologies to, that way today. Mm-hmm. And we ended up coming back and it looks just like the shift they built today. Um, and that was, that was phase one and that's done. Phase two is an exploratory phase um, where we're going to find, uh, we're going to find 4,000 people um, who are, who, who see that project and say, Hmm, that is a, that if that project gets created, I would like that. I think that'd be an awesome thing. And I'm willing to put $5 down to help you with marketing. It's just $5. I'll never see anything from that $5. It's not an investment. I'm not making promises with it. I'm just putting $5 towards, towards um, marketing for that. And that's a total of $20,000. And that's phase two. And that's what we're in right now. And then phase three is when, at, in phase three, each, 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 at each phase, we stay at the 4,000. Um, we account for all 4,000 spaces that we have in this vessel. And we account for it at a progressively larger scale. So at phase three, it's at $500. And that's going to raise $2 million, which is what we're going to use to uh, work with Samsung Heavy Industries to actually create the professional designs. Because what we have on that website is just a high-level estimate based on what we know about the structures they have today. It's not every bolt and everything. They can't take that to the shipyard and actually build it from that. That's pathetically primitive compared to what the final one will actually look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and the final one will actually be made by Samsung Heavy Industries. That's phase three. And then phase four is when you actually build it and then all the other pieces involved and 10 years of maintenance for it. And that, that is all actually detailed at the end of this 90 second video is a short summary of a larger 18 minute video that goes into a lot of technical details with every single aspect of it. And the last like third of that covers all the financial details of these things. Okay, great. Um, question in the chat, how is homeowners slash business owners insurance handled to protect the investment in a module on the ship? Um, however people want. Um, it's a free market. If people want to have insurance on something, then um, there will be competing people offering to provide what, offering whatever services that people are looking for. But there are no requirements from government. Government is not involved. This is a, an anarcho, anarcho-capitalist society. Um, the, the only restrictions on the economy that the government would impose is that you may not murder, you may not kidnap, and you may not steal. And that's it. And, and that's also a restriction on everyone else. And we're in our society, we're very, we're more accustomed than we might realize to solving problems using threats of murder, kidnapping, and theft. And that would be a, a, a life change for those who choose to live there. But we won't, we won't be mandating any of those things. Um, but if people want them, they'll, they'll have the free market at their disposal to, to get those services. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about, so you're in phase two right now, which is um, recruiting 4,000 people to donate $5 to support Freedom Haven. And so you went to Porkfest to, as, as part of like getting those 4,000 people to donate. So tell us about, um, you know, why Porkfest and, uh, and, and a little bit about why was Porkfest an attraction? Um, Porkfest, um, switch over to, do you guys see that? Yes. Um, Porkfest is, for those who don't, aren't, aren't familiar with it, it's, it's, it's something that was created by the, the Free State Project as um, three, about, now it's about 3,000 libertarians each year uh, gather at a campsite. And they basically take over this whole area. They don't take over. They, they, they rent it. So they, ha- they have access to this whole area for like a week. And actually like two weeks to be included the after party. Um, and people just all show up in their RVs and tents. And just, um, it's just, it's, it's like, it's like, a, it's like an impromptu city that just shows up um, at that location. These are mostly just morning shots. because I love the, <laughs> the, the mist in the morning. Um, but it's just, uh, these, these are the campsites. It's, you know, 3,000 people at one location. And, and what's, what drew me to this is that um, the Freedom Haven project is, is kind of unique among seasteading. In fact, actually, uh, it might be that even most people who are into seasteading would not be interested in Free ha- Freedom Haven project for one reason. And that is that the Freedom Haven project is not about having an expensive, fancy, sexy um, place to live on the sea. It's not, it's not a cruise ship. It's more of a, uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not to that level fancy. It's, it's meant for more of the middle class and even the lower class. 
um, even though there, 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 there would be a lot of people there who are, who are wealthy as well. And it's more for people who, who love freedom. Um, we'll be outside the exclusive economic zone. We won't be anywhere near shore. Um, it's it's going to be a completely different lifestyle. Um, and those who don't value freedom in that level won't find any won't find much value in the project. But people at, at Porkfest, all three thousand of them, love freedom enough to travel all the way across the country to this location each year. And so they all love freedom. That's that's what they're 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 the the demographic that Freedom Haven is targeting. So it's, it's, it's perfect. So tell me so a little bit more about the, the audience there, because even among libertarians, there are different shades of libertarianism and not all libertarians are interested in seasteading, although there is quite a lot of overlap. So, so when you go to Porkfest, you know, what, um, what was your, what was the reception? How were people reacting when they first heard well let me let me ask it this way did most of the people you talked to know about seasteading in the first place or did you have to explain it to them most of the people i mean a lot of people knew about it because it, the, the seasteading institute had a, had a presence out there and and so did uh, patrick freeman and 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 there have been a lot of presentations in the past so so there are a lot of veterans who who knew something about it um but I would say the majority of the people didn't know much, didn't know what sea setting was. I would say maybe, I don't know. I don't know a percentage to it. I, I, there, there were more questions about what a sea set is than there were, oh yeah, I know about that. Um, we had, uh, in each, each presentation that we did, um, we ended up about getting about 10% of the audience uh, wanted, thought it was a good idea and were willing to put $5 down towards marketing. Right. So that was, that, that was the reception that we got. So you gave, how many presentations did you give? Were you there for a week or for the full two weeks? Uh, we were only there for one week. I was only there for one week. Um, and this was, this was not planned ahead of time. <laughs> I didn't, I, there are a lot of mistakes I made with this. I'll be doing differently. And I can I talk about those as well. But this is, uh, uh, I was there for one week and I did um, about, I did about three different presentations plus the, the pancake breakfast. <laughs> and the pancake breakfast, make sure that here, um, the pancake breakfast was, um, a way to get people to come. Everyone's, every, everyone's, um, everyone's campsite could be used however they wanted to. Some people were just there to, um, to just enjoy the party, but about maybe 10% of the people that were, that were there were, were there for a specific reason. They were either selling something, they were, they were um, petitioning some idea, some freedom-based idea, or looking to have groups or whatever it is. They, they, they came there with something that they were, they were wanting to get an audience for. Um, and share this. And the, um, so we, we had, uh, this, this, is, this is my campsite. Can you guys see it? Yep. Nothing fancy, <laughs> just my van and I had a, 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 a tent. Um, the teachers, by the way, did not, not turn out well. I mean, the, 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 the shirts turned out well, except for you can see on the left there, we, we, we went with, it, with new companies and we wanted to see what the quality was. So th this was a test run mm -hmm. and half of them were terrible and half of them were okay. So, you know, uh, we won't do, won't do t-shirts next time. But we, I basically set up uh, free pancakes, and each morning I made about 150 to 300 pancakes for people who just want free pancakes. There's no condition, no no catch. Basically, you just come out and have pancakes. And basically, what it made, made it, what it what it produced was that my hub was a place that that uh, maybe 30 to 50 people each morning would come and hang out at that hub and just talk, and that was great. And um, at that hub. Um, that, so that was one of the presentations I did, the fire steel. Um, it's hard, hard to see on the a, on a right there on the floor. You can see that um, over by the, the table, I had uh, one of my 50-inch uh, 4K monitors just playing that 90-second intro video that we watched before um, on a continual loop. By the way, that intro video was at 4K, so if, if you want to see the higher quality version of it that isn't going through Zoom, it's, it's on the website. Um, and it was... I had the volume set um, quiet enough that anybody who doesn't want to pay attention to it or wants to have a different conversation, it's not drowning out any conversation, but loud enough that anyone who wants to pay attention to it 
um, could pay attention to it. And what happened is it, it wasn't conditional on the pancakes at all. It was just on the side. And about maybe a third of the people who came actually watched the video and two thirds of them didn't because they weren't interested. And that's fine. So that, that, that's the, the pancakes were not conditional upon that, but it got, it got the crowd there. And from that, about 10% of the people liked what they saw and it, um, donated $5 for the marketing. Campaign. Well, how did if, if someone's standing in line for pancakes, they watch the video, how do they then donate? Do they have to talk to you or do you have a QR code? Oh, yeah, we had lots of options. I, I, I was set up for everything. I had set up for, for Bitcoin, QR code, Venmo, uh, PayPal, um, um, Patreon, uh, Cash, Gold, Silver. Uh, they, they use a thing called Goldbacks out there and just whatever people chose. And most people just would come up with a $5 bill and say, I'm gonna support that, which is, I was surprising. I, I kind of, I was kind of expecting that Bitcoin to be really big because it was at one point, but I think because Bitcoin was at a low, no one wanted to let go of their Bitcoins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so everyone was holding on tight to their Bitcoins. Um, but but uh, there's a thing out there called uh, the gold back, which is a, uh, a, a, a currency that is actually made out of gold that a lot of people out there were using. Um, so it's actually kind of like one ounce of gold or five ounces of gold, whatever. Actually, it's a foil. Ad. It's actually kind of clever. Um, so a lot of people were using that. Um, and that's what they were, a lot of people were just using. Some people came up and just handed me a piece of silver. Other people handed me, you know, gold and other stuff. Just whatever the currency was they were using, there was no restriction on that. So it was, it was kind of cool. That's cool. Um, okay, so tell, so tell me in more concrete numbers. So what was your goal? getting there, um, you know, what did, what did you hope to raise? How much money did you hope to raise? And then how much did you actually raise? Um, it wasn't, I didn't raise as much as um, I'd hoped for. I hoped to find, um, and we had to understand it for our audience, I, this Freedom Haven is starting at the very bottom of the barrel. barrel. We don't have a million dollar backing. This is um, each, each year for the last four years, we've doubled in the amount of uh, bit visibility we have, the amount of people who are interested in the project, the amount of donations we receive, and it's doubling each year, but it's at the very bottom of the barrel. Last year, we did $500 with the, don the donations. This year, we had $1,000 with the donations. Next year, it's $2,000, and it's, we're, we're starting from that up, and we got um, about, I think it was about 30, I should pull up the actual number. I think it was about uh, 50 patrons um, from, from um, Porkfest itself, um, but our goal was to to get 200. Um, but I didn't I didn't know the layout. I didn't know how everything worked. Um, what and there are a lot of things I'm going to be doing next year. And I think next year I'm going to be able to do, if not double, maybe four times as much to get closer to the numbers we're looking at. Because there are a lot of a lot of things I would have done completely different next year. Sure. Um, what was the cost of going? Um, about. $1,500 for me, because I, I chose to drive instead of, instead of flying out. I had to bring all the equipment and stuff with us. Um, that, that's me making the pancakes. <laughs> and what were some of the most common questions people had for you? <laughs> um, be, beyond the, wow, you have an aircraft carrier? <laughs> <laughs> Um, not actually not that many people ask that there. That's, that's more of an online question. Um, just how is it going to work? The, the intro, the intro kind of covered a lot of their questions. Um, they didn't have the basic questions as much, uh, because we, the intro did a good job of, of covering all the basics. So every question was kind of more unique in different areas. Um, how are you going to handle medical? What kind of freedoms would you have? Um, how will you handle a common one is, um, how are you going to handle, uh, drug cartels or, or are, are not drugs are legal there so there aren't being drug cartels that way but there's um any any cartel or pirates that will attack the vessel you know um and i and i, I pointed out to them because people in, in pork fest this is a, a libertarian society and yes there is a huge range of libertarians there's there's people who are or one one way or another way but but there are a lot of people who are packing a lot of people carrying guns in fact actually in these pictures here is probably uh i don't know five guns in that picture somewhere. Um, I, I, I just don't know where. Um, and some are open, some aren't, and people come up with their, you know, big guns, whatever guns. And I said, and I told them that 
they would be as well protected there. In fact, actually more so than they are in Porkfest here. And they completely understood what that meant because you know, what did you do for security in Porkfest? Well, everyone looks at each other like, well, we're security because you know, we're packing, <laughs> you know, we're, we're got the security. And we'll actually have the hired uh, full-time staff and the structure itself is actually uh, built to be defensible um, in that sense. Uh, so, so how's that going to be? Uh, how uh, utilities are going to work? Um, do, so, do we? Okay. What, what, what are we doing differently? That they, they oftentimes point out all the failures, past failures of seasteads, and they well, they just fail all these different ones. What's going to be different about Freedom Haven compared to those previous ones? And I, I always had to be careful doing that because I. Those, those people who went ahead are my heroes and, it, and it's great what they've done. But then we talk frankly about what we would have done differently and what, how I think they did wrong and, or it didn't, didn't work out. And for me, it's all kind of the same way. It's, they, they tried to work with the government inside the exclusive economic zone. And one way or another, the government found a reason to shut them down or they didn't qualify for some reason, whatever it was. And for whatever reason, they couldn't do it inside that because government. And our plan is to be outside of government, which means, and, and, and to do it with a flag of convenience, do it according to the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, um, hopefully have a, eventually have a flag that the International Maritime Organization recognizes and do everything, all the, all the T's crossed and all the I's dotted so that we can be outside the jurisdiction of all countries and that won't be an issue. I think that that would be very attractive to people attending Port Fest. Yes, yes. I, I think that I could get a lot more people. If I was one of the big problems we had there is, uh, is this is this is an aerial shot that one of the people in their drones took at Port Fest. Oh, I see and, your campsite. Yep. Yeah, campsite's all the way over on the left, all off by itself. Um, and this is actually only like half the picture. You didn't get the, everything below. It's like it's about twice as big as what you see here. Um, this is this is uh, most of the people that were there, three thousand. Um, some of their friends. Uh, oh, yeah, this is me in the crowd there, circled. Um, but uh, where most of the traffic is off on the right, uh, off in the center on the right, it's, it's a wide angle, so it's, it's a little misleading. Uh, everything in the center is off on the east side, and I'm far off in the boonies on the left side, out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So the fact we had as many people show up there as, as we did is impressive, considering that they had to walk like five minutes just to get to the campsite. So um, but the next time, next year, I'm actually right up there in the front with everyone else. So we'll get a lot more traffic. We'll be right in the middle of all the, the main traffic areas. And we'll have a lot more uh, reserved presentations. I didn't take advantage of all the, the presentation slots that were available. I only had three. Next time, I'll probably do about 10. Because um, there are different people. There, there's so much going on all the time that even people want, were interested, want to come by. Um, there is doing something else at that same time. At every at every every hour, there is multiple events going on all over the place, completely decentralized. There's no there's no one saying you have to do it this way or they have to approve it. Everyone's just doing whatever they want, and it's it's awesome. <laughs> Here's a another view of of the map. They have a poster near the front. Um, let's see if it will let me. I have to stop sharing and share this again. Um, there is a, a, a huge poster they have put up in the front and they asked everyone to just write on the poster, I put a sticker on the poster, their hub, so people can find it on the poster and, and find each other. Even though there's, it's all online as well through, you know, they have PDFs and stuff, but um, this is something that, share this. Oh, cool. But this, this, is, this, is, this is a layout of the whole camp. Um, uh, the whole whole campground. This is this is uh, Rogers um, campground. Um, they have. Can't see my mouse. Can you see my mouse when I move this? You can look at that. Yeah, we can oh. see the mouse. Yeah, they have they have a, a, a motel up here. They have a, the pools up here. Uh, they have campgrounds up here where there's tents, and all this down here is pretty much RV sites. Um, and it, uh, they sell out like immediately. That the, the 2013. The 2000, sorry, 2023 uh, sites when it was op made open, they sold out within a few hours. Everything for 2023. So they're completely, the, 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 the demand for people who want to go there is just through the roof. Um, even though it's an old campground and it isn't 
I've kept quite as well. It's definitely feeling its age. Um, it's not about the campground. It's about people just coming together, uh, love freedom. Uh, but this is, this is the main uh, poster they had in the entrance. And you can see where all the different hubs are on the, on the right-hand side here, where if you, there are different things that people have. Uh, this is the biggest one here. And I'm over here off right. on the left. So, um, but next, next year I will be right, I think 47, I'm right here, right here in the very middle, in front. So um, location, location, location. And also, I, I, I won't waste time with t-shirts. I mean, I, the t-shirts are nice, but it's not, it's best to buy t-shirts online, um, trying to find the size, exactly what you were looking for there. I mean, we, everyone got it. We, we, we didn't come back with any extra t-shirts. All the t-shirts were, 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 were either sold or given away, but it didn't, it wasn't quite, it, it, didn't, it didn't match what, uh, what pork fest was basically even though we had other people selling t-shirts too it just it didn't it didn't match what we were doing it wasn't a draw for people it wasn't a draw and and also it, it, it's confusing because we're like okay the pancakes are free we can buy a t-shirt we're really hoping that you're going to put marketing in just forget that forget about the t-shirt aspect and just say it's it the pancakes are free come and hang out if you want to if you're interested you can put five dollars towards the, the project and that's it don't complicate with other things there you know and, and so next time we'll just keep easy. That being said, you can always buy the t-shirts online at our website. So, I mean, were you collecting email addresses of people who are interested? Yeah. Yeah. Um, about, about, uh, I have email addresses for about half of them. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of people who are, because they're libertarians, they're very secretive. Um, so they wanted to support it, but they didn't want their name to be on a list. So, um, a lot of them, uh, about a third of them were um, anonymous. I just, I want to support it, but I don't want to put my name on a list or anything. And, and I only got an email address for about half of them. Um, and we, we suspect that once we get the full 4,000 people, which we anticipate um, being, we anticipate being there in about, about four years. Um, and once we were, we were at the, the level of 4,000, that only about maybe 15, 20% of those people will actually be interested in going to the next level. Most of them are just like, oh, I mean, I'm interested in that at, at a distance, but not, it's not really for me. I just think it'd be really cool to have it, but I myself wouldn't want to live there, but I, I do hope you guys have it because that'd be a great, great thing to have. Um, so only like maybe 15, 20% of those people would, would, would be interested in taking it to the next level, which is why we're at each phase, there's going to be about four years at that phase. And we'll stay at that phase until we find the 4,000 at that level and then move up. And this whole thing's debt-free, so there's no, um, there's no... And each, each phase promises something very specific to that phase. So there's no, there's no, um, um, and also everything's open design. Anybody can take whatever we've done at any moment and run off in a different direction. So there's no um, financial um, debt, if that makes sense, in the, in the project. The whole project is debt free. We're out in the open. I have, I have a main job. This is what we, we do with 20 hours. I do with 20 hours of my, my, my week each week working on this, um, but there's no, um, I, I'm committed to this for 15 years, but if, if it, everyone's worried about what, what happens if it, if it fails, what happens if it does go, doesn't succeed? Well, if it doesn't succeed, we will succeed at each, each level, but it, it, there's no, there's nothing lost. You know, if, if, we, if, we, if we finish phase three and we never make it to four, phase four, then we have the, the advanced uh, designs that Samsung Game Industries or whatever the, the, the shipyard we ended up going with produced, and that'll be public for everyone to have, which will have these, these, these blueprints out there. And if anyone else in the future wants to run with it and, and use them to build them, they're welcome to it. So basically, there's, no, there's nothing that is lost at any point. Does that make sense? Sure. And unfortunately, though, um, this approach is much slower. It would be much faster to, to, to hire a CEO and get into debt for the whole thing, sell the thing for shares, and try to have this thing built in three years. And that's what a lot of people say, that's debt-based. And also, I don't know how well it will succeed if we don't actually find the base, which is what we're doing right now, painstakingly slow, but we're actually, like I said, we're doubling each year. And at that, at that phase, well, I think there's a lot more support and a lot more, um, it'll be a lot more um, solid, if that makes sense. Right. No, that's an interesting approach to be 
debt free and to build from the ground up, um, which, re which requires patience. But then again, at the end, you have people who are actually committed to the project because they've been involved yeah. for so many years. That's really interesting. So do you have advice for people who want to talk about seasteading or, or, or like recruit new seasteaders? Do you have advice for people on how to, how to start those conversations with folks? Um, I, I did learn, which is something that probably everyone else could probably say, well, they already knew this, but I didn't, <laughs> that online marketing isn't the same thing as in-person. Um, when you're actually there in a crowd in person talking to people, um, you connect in a much better and much deeper, much more productive way than you do online. Um, online marketing is, is useful, but I mean, in, in one week, uh, we tripled our patron, patronage and that's from what we've done the previous four years. Mm -hmm. So it, it, nothing, nothing beats being, and so when in the future, we're, we're going to do a lot more in-person stuff. We're going to fly to a lot more different conventions. We're going to do a lot more speaking, speaking roles at these events. Um, I mean, I, even, even Anarchapulco has like, what, like 300 people that show up each year? How big is their, their crowd? Um, when I was there in 2020, I would say it was closer to 2,000 people. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Um, uh, what, so what other, so other than Porkfest next year, what else are you looking to do to, um, you know, you mentioned some, some general like attending conferences and events, but do you have anything specific lined up for reaching new people? Um, no, no, nothing. That's a specific right now. The, a lot of times these, these, these things are, are, are uh, reserved and set up um, uh, half a year at the, at the most ahead of time. Um, I'll, I'll, where I'm considering Anarchopoco itself, um, although that might be a different crowd. I don't know if they'll, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, it, when, when the, the big, unfortunately, um, I am kind of self-funding everything at my, at this point. And so it kind of is a limitation on how much money I have. And unfortunately we are in a recession and with everything being the way it is, it was difficult for me to get to pork fest this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's, 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 it, 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 and I'm, I'm funding everything myself. And so it, it, that's kind of the limitation. If, if, for example, there was an event that was going to be coming up in, in, a, in a month, um, an entrepreneur event that one of the people in our group said, you should come down and give a talk. And he, he, he thinks that you'd be able to actually have an opening for me to, to have it, to do a presentation there. And it's in front of a group of about maybe hundred, 200 people. Um, the problem is, is that was going to be like $500 with the airfare tickets. And I just didn't have the, the capital to be able to do that at that time. Right. Um, it's in the future that might change and hopefully it will change. But at this point, we're kind of limited of, of where we can go based on just how much funding we have to actually get there. So, right. So other than the cost to travel, what are some of the other criteria you, you'd look for in an event before you decide to attend? Like, what are you looking for in their audience or programming that makes you think, oh, this might be a Freedom Haven friendly the event? Number, the number of people that left Freedom. Um, this is this is a niche market within a niche market. Um, first of all, seasteading itself is a niche market until it until it's shown to be until it's, it becomes popular. Once it's popular, people like I can't even imagine like like going to the the, the new world. That was a niche market, you know. Being a, being a pioneer that to come to America, that was a niche market until it became popular. Being out um, a, a, a frontiersman on on the in the Great Wild West, that was um, that was a niche market until it is established and everyone's like, oh well, that's obvious at this point. So this. Seasteading is a niche market. And within seasteading, those who are doing it for freedom is also a niche market. Um, who, not, 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 not freedom in the sense that I love looking at a beautiful sunrise in the morning and there's that sense of freedom, like my soul, it feels free. We mean freedom and, and specifically socioeconomic freedom to be able to do anything economically or socially you want without anyone stopping you as long as you aren't threatening the life, freedom, property of someone else. And that's a niche market as well. So I would, for the audience, I would look for people who who truly and passionately love freedom um, in any kind of group. And, and, and pork fest is it. <laughs> but I'd love to be anything else. And Arcapoco also as well. That's like a candidate as well. Yeah. Uh, we have questions in the chat. I promise I'll get to them. But um, last thing I want to ask, Tony, is um, are there any more lessons learned that you want to share about your pork fest experience? You kind of interspersed them in your discussion, but is there anything else in particular? Um, 
be patient and learning as you go along. Um, people laughed at at uh, at SpaceX when it first took off and how many failures they had with their launches and stuff. And and Elon Musk is a great example, I think, in, in this that he just was patient and just kept trying. And now everyone's like, wow! And they they've left everyone else in their dust in the dust as they just learn from their mistakes and move forward. And that's that's what we're doing. Um, we're starting off small, but as long as we don't give up and keep learning from from past failures, we will be successful as well. All right. Um, so one question in the chat is about communicable disease control on Freedom Haven. How do you expect to handle that? Um, we won't have mandated mask requirements if that's what they're asking, but um, the structure of the vessel itself will have, one of the problems we had with cruise ships is that the, for the most part, most cruise ships, uh, their ventilation supply is a combination of fresh air with um, air that is recycled through the cabin. So even though like, uh, which, which crew ship was that the first one where the breakout happened? Um, I, don't know. I forgot which one that was. Um, they, that, that one that made the news and they were, they were quarantined for like two months and they, they had nowhere to go. Um, they, they, everyone was, was told to stay in their cabins during this time, but it didn't, didn't do anything any good because they were still breathing everyone else's air because the ventilation system had everything recycled. Um, at Freedom Haven, at least with the current design, all the air comes in from outside and it's pumped directly into each of the, um, each of the cabins. And then there's the, uh, a typical HVAC event, sy event system where the air comes out through the vent stack, um, like we have in a normal household. Um, so in a sense, every single cabin is breathing outside air and um, everything that's coming out of that cabin is going out through the, um, the, the the HVAC uh, vent system, the, the utilities. So basically no one's breathing other people's air unless they're traveling the hallways or visiting each other, which they're free to do. And it, and it is a high density population like you have would have in a, main, in a big city. Um, so there is higher, higher risk of that like you would in a big city, but you also have um, a free market medical system like you would see nowhere else in the world, which would be so exciting. <laughs> so I think that you will actually be safer there from any diseases than you would any other place because you'll have a level of medical system that's not incompetent and not socialist, the way medical system was, was supposed to be. And people will, will find solutions for these things in a way that is, will, will be impressive to observe. Sure. And if someone joins Freedom Haven and is later found to be a cause of friction between community members, how will the community handle that situation? Will you have an arbitration process or something like that? Um, we will have a, a private arbitration. People can, can choose for themselves if they want to do private arbitration. First of all, uh, Freedom Haven itself is the name of the, this country that we're establishing. Um, every vessel, every floating, every floating structure is a province of Freedom Haven. We have a constitution that limits how force is used. You may not, you may not threaten anyone else's life, freedom, and property unless you are, um, uh, it is the minimum amount needed to prevent murder, kidnapping, and theft. So there's a restriction on the amount of force used, and that, that's all in the Constitution that's at a, a federal level, but there's no federal government. Every floating vessel will do their own government within the limitations of the Constitution, however they see fit. So every single floating vessel out there will be its own state, so to speak, within Freedom Haven. So for example, the main vessel that we're designing is called New Liberty. So how New Liberty is planning to do it is we'll have um, uh, private arbit arbitration, but we'll also have a court system where people can actually pay for the use of, uh, we'll have a huge list of, of judges, people that we believe that, that New Liberty recognizes as judges to, to judge in various matters. And people can choose from whatever judges they want. It's, oh, I don't like that judge. I think they're corrupt or whatever it is. And, and everything's public. Everything that the, the government does in, in New Liberty will be streamed live to the world on a, on a, on a streaming system that will, there's nothing that they can, they can hide. Um, but there'll be arbitration that way. But another way we'll, we'll help with that as well is that um, even though people will have the freedom to do whatever they want inside of New Liberty, there are additional restrictions that people would be willing to put on themselves. For example, I, if I go there with my family, I would prefer that people are not having sex in front of my front door and prefer that people aren't smoking crack in front of my front door where I have a ventilation and we're breathing it in. That's my preference, but I don't wanna put that restriction on anyone else. So what would happen is I would say, okay, here's a list of restrictions I want to put on myself and everyone else who agrees with me, we will have our own gated, gated community 
that that would be a restriction within that gated community that you can't come into a community unless you are willing to abide by those additional rules. So there's additional restrictions that people are willing to put on themselves within those communities. And that will also help arbitrate that as well because people will be living more where they're accustomed to around the groups that they are more, more accustomed to as well. So if someone breaks one of those rules within a community or, or one of the, the broader overarching um, crimes, who's responsible for investigating the crime? Uh, the people that bring it before the courts. Um, the, 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 there is no, there is no IRS, there is no uh, FBI or, I mean, we, it, it may be in, in, in uh, New Liberty's best interest to, to research certain ones that may, may, they may find a threat. But for the most part, people are, are, are bringing forth complaints to the judges that they themselves are bringing forward. And because the, the laws are so, so small, there's so few laws there, basically, you may not murder, kidnap, or steal, and specifically what that means that there won't be any real needs for, for lawyers. People may choose still to have them, but for the most part, it's just gonna be, everyone knows what the laws are. It's not gonna be something where you need to have representation or whatever, it's gonna be complicated. And this, this trial is gonna take the next 15 years to complete. The trial may be done in a few minutes because it's all very straightforward and simple. And you bring forth your evidence as to try to prove how this person was, was breaking those rules or whatever it was. And there's no long-term prisons in, in New Liberty. Um, anybody who is who, who's found having broken these rules has to fix what they've broken or they risk being banished from, from the community. So there's no, there's no taxation there. So, so there's, you don't, people don't get a free ride in prison and people aren't are locked away any long-term. It's basically everyone is living by those rules. Um, otherwise they're not welcome to, to live there. If that makes sense. So if a person is murdered, who, who... Like what, someone without a spouse or family, who brings that that murder to the judge? That would be a situation where I imagine a new liberty itself would probably um, bring that to the judge themselves. Because if we have a murderer on the on the vessel, it'd be a concern for a lot of people. Um, but something I noticed, like in Porkfest, um, there was there were zero reported crimes the whole time that people were there, and the only issue that I actually heard about was that someone had a whole bunch of gaming systems on display that he was selling. And one of the kids apparently walked up with one of the portable gaming systems. That was it. Of the 3,000 people that were there for, and, and everyone thinks just kind of open because there is no theft. There is no, when you're around people who actually embrace freedom and you can't actually even come into new liberty without promising that you, you will make that contract that you will not murder, kidnap, and theft unless, unless it's the minimum needed for your self-defense against murder, kidnapping, and theft. You you understand that and you agree to it before you're going into that, which means those people who don't agree with that, they're either lying to get into it or um, the only people there are the people who actually would, would agree with that lifestyle. And it changes everything. It, it really does change everything. People at Porkfest, you don't have to worry about leaving your, your, your car unlocked and, and things like that because that, that mentality isn't there. People who embrace freedom tend not to be those kind of people that, that would murder, kidnap, and steal. Does that make sense? It's still a risk, but I, it, it, it's, a, it's, a different, it's, a different, it's a different ball of wax, if that makes sense. Sure. I mean, I, well, I've never been to Porkfest, so I haven't experienced <laughs> that specifically, but um, there's another question in the chat. Um, so if you, if a crime is committed against you, you bring it to the judge, but if you're accused of a crime, is there, are you entitled to a jury of your peers? It doesn't sound like it. Yes, you're entitled to a jury of your peers. And, and actually we're in, but every, every vessel can handle this differently. Um, remember Freedom Haven is a, is a group of vessels that are out there, uh, structures, floating structures. Uh, in New Liberty specifically, how we have it laid out currently. And, and if people find any issues with it, we can change it obviously because it's, it's, it's draft format is you have to take it before and you have to prove that they used force twice. You have to prove that you use force for once in front of the courts. And then the second one, that's the one where the person, the person can be there involved the, the, the whole time, but um, you don't get dragged before courts for, for silly charges. They have to prove it once and then they have to prove it a second time. And that way you know that, okay, now they, they've proven it first. I take this one seriously and I, I'm going to go to that court to see, to defend myself. But you're not, your time isn't wasted with all these, these fake charges. Um, and then once force is proven to be used, um, you have to you have to prove 
how what you did was that was self-defense. And if you can't prove it, then that force is unjustified or a percentage of it was unjustified. And you have to have 100% of the jury agree that force was used. But only half of them have to are needed to agree that it was self-defense. Now, I know you have a constitution. Is this all, you know, uh, written out explicitly in your constitution on your website? Yes. Okay. yes. So and there's two levels of constitution. There's a constitution for all the freedom haven, which doesn't go into details about courts. It just talks about the principles at a high level. And then there is the the Constitution of New Liberty, which specifically talks about how they plan on doing the courts or implementing it in that vessel. Great. Uh, um, and uh, anyone else is welcome to unmute themselves and ask a question. We're, uh, we have a few minutes left of our, um, of our time, but, um, but so please get your questions in now. I have another question in the chat. In, in response to talking about people who value liberty not, tending not to commit those crimes, the common is the first generation in your community might abide by that, but what about those who come later? You know, like kids who are born in that community. I think that is a that is a diff, definitely a, a, a difficult question. What would we have an age of accountability? Um, and and it, how, how you do consent is, is always going to be a tricky thing when it comes to kids. You know, what age can kids have consent to do certain things? And you know, kids will all, obviously will always want to say, "Well, I, you, you should have be younger, younger." And adults will always want to say, "We want to be older and older." And we we that's in the constitution. You know, for um, your own you consent to be able to, to make decisions about your own property at age eight. Uh, consent regards to uh, to sex. It, it depends on how old a person is you're having sex with, um, and that that is um, uh, between fourteen and sixteen, sixteen and twenty, and eighteen and no limit. Does that make sense? So you don't you don't have full consent of sex sex until you're eighteen years old. But with people that are close to your age, it, there, there's concessions for, for people who are younger, um, which is that that in itself might be considered too old for some and too young for some, because what you realize is that anybody who has sex before that age, they can't prove consent because they're, they're not old enough to have, be able to prove that they gave that consent, which means it's considered rape as far as the courts are concerned. You're like, oh my goodness, that's kind of a red flag. How do you want to handle that? So it, it, that, is a, that is a dangerous dangerous thing. But once a child reaches a certain age of consent, they have to provide that consent. And before then, their, their guardians can provide it, except for sex and, and death. Those are actually written out. You, you, the guardians cannot consent to death or, or, or sex. But um, uh, after that age, they have to provide it, which means they then have to sign that same contract that people coming into the community had to sign. Otherwise, they have to leave. And that's they're like, oh, my goodness, but they, they live there. And they said, well, yeah, but this, this is a... A, in a sense, this whole thing is a gated community. It's a voluntary contract. No one is being forced. There's no, there's no social contract here. It's a quite literal contract. You, you are agreeing to live in a, in a society where you may not murder, kidnap, or steal unless the minimum needed for self-defense and specifically what that means. And there are no people allowed in that community who have not made that contract. So anyone who's born in that community, at some point in their life, they will either have to make that uh, make that commitment or they will have to leave. There, there's no, there's no, and, and, and that, that is kind of an, that is a, a, a complicated subject in that sense. So but, it sounds like there's a, there's a, um, there would be a certain population limit where, where running a, a community in this way might become untenable if you get beyond a certain population. So on your new Liberty vessel, there are 4,000 living spaces. To use, yeah. Um, that, and and it, it, it'd be based on uh, weight limits in those locations. There's a size limit and then there's a weight limit. What people choose to do with that is completely up to them. Um, and you'll have a huge variation, I imagine. You'll have some people who have a million dollars they want to spend on it. And they'll have a nice little lovely home that's, you know, 2,000 square feet and has all the amenities they have in their home. And there's other people who may be coming from a poor third world country and they're cramming 10 to 15 people in one of these, in one of these, uh, these dorms and every, it's basically just a bunch of of um, triple decker bunk beds with a bathroom and a sink and minimum supplies and it works for them but they're very crammed in there but it's their it's their call they can they can use this space however they want to we won't be there will be no fire marshals no uh, okay that, that's probably the wrong word to use because they're secure uh you cannot put your neighbor like for example we mentioned about explosives and stuff so there are limitations in in, in those sense but other than other than that, as long as everyone consents to those living conditions, 
they can live with at whatever within whatever limitation their finances can 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 buy them. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you no how do you how do you test what's too explosive? Like what? It, how do you evaluate that? That is a very good question, uh, and, and and that's a messy question. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, uh, a gas gasoline, for example, there's going to be people who are who are making who are producing. Um, um, marijuana, what's a marijuana concentrate they use at the oil um, CBD. and, and it requires CBD and using the, the, the gases uh, to, to produce it and the gases leak and it explodes, you know, uh, there, there would be limits on how much of that you could do at a time without proper ventilation and showing you have proper ventilation um, in that kind of situation. And since uh, the, the gases they use are heavier than air, it, it collects down there until it can spark and the whole thing blows up. So there, there, there are those kind of concerns. And and how to properly do that, it is a messy situation. And yes, it is a regulation. And that's something that government has always done a terrible job at. We're open to ideas of how to, how to best do that. But you, you do want to have some kind of, um, because there are, there are people who will sneak on board for nefarious reasons. It isn't the accidents that we're worried as much as people who are trying to do it to a, a terrorist attack or things like that. You know, we want yeah, to- if it, if it can happen, it will eventually happen. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that, that's a good question. How, how would you recommend would be the best way to handle that? Because that is a, a definitely a blurry, a blurry line there. It's going to be something that has to be discussed by the community and you'll have to adjust the rules of the community accordingly. Exactly. Which, mining, which when you talk about things like security means very uncomfortable discussions, including the probability yes. that the crew might have to search a unit. And that is very exactly. antithetical to what you're trying to accomplish? Um, the, the, the spaces in New Liberty are not purchased or rented um, because no vessel on the high seas is permanent. Um, the, the sea eventually claims all vessels. It's just a question of when, and we have to maintain it each year. So what people are buying into is a 10 year uh, lease of this space. Um, they can bring their own containers. They can bring their own office spaces. They can have their own property there, but their their space is still rented. The whole vessel is owned by um, corporation or whoever it is that's owned a vessel within but, the limits. But, that, but that's still custody and control. So they have yes. they have ownership from that standpoint. Yes, that's correct. I mean, I feel like these a lot of these questions you, will will be answered in the moment that they come up, right? Like they have. I mean. But I think it would be disastrous. Hopefully, hopefully use ahead of time. But the, as we get closer to it, they'll, they'll be more refined. Yes. Right. I mean, it would be disastrous for Freedom Haven if there was an explosion that destroyed the vessel. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah. So it's. I don't want to think the worst of people, but sometimes you have to think the worst of people. Right. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Or, or prepare for the worst. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Sure. Yeah. Please don't have meth labs and don't make pipe bombs. Yes. And then you have to have the ability to enforce that. <laughs> right. I mean, and but it sounds like Tony, you, you do consider the externalities, right? Like if you're if you're if you're keeping products in your space that could destroy your neighbor's space, that's an externality that you have to. On, on the vessel, you just can't have that material. You can't have that amount of material in your space. Without, without, involving, without involving the New Liberty personnel, because maybe they do have it, but they have it stored in a way that everyone is, and, and the neighbors are assured that that is safe. They're not concerned, so we're, we're good. You know? So maybe there is a huge amount of explosives you know, that's in one place, but it's stored in such a way that people aren't are worried about it. And if, if, if everyone buys off on it and they're not worried about it, then that's their, their call and their choice. I'm not really worried about an explosion that will actually just, just damage the vessel itself. We're going to have a, a triple hull vessel, um, and it's going to be, you know, in a way that I'm not worried about the vessel itself being damaged. I'm more worried about the loss of life um, from the people. And but yeah. people can whatever level of risk the community wants. When it comes to ships, when it comes to ships at sea, the biggest risk tends to be fire. Mm -hmm. Like yes. that's the that's the one that'll get you. And it won't be the fire itself; it'll be the smoke. Yes, mm -hmm. that's one reason why we made the ventilation when we did. Right. So if you have an air system that can prevent spreading the danger of that. I mean, very interesting. I think, um, you know, if, is there, is there any, do you have any 
final thoughts you want to share? I mean, the main topic of this this event was to talk about how to how to spread the message of seasteading and, and and get win support for a project. So, if you have any final thoughts about that, I'd love to hear them. Um, or if there are any final questions about that, please uh, you can you can unmute yourself or you can put the question in the chat. It's it's a learning experience, and I, I'm looking forward to next year and and taking us to the next level. And each each year we we get better at it. It one thing it's it's a it's a public speaking. It I. When we started this project, we didn't we didn't consider any of ourselves public speakers. And as you can tell, I am not a public speaker, but I'm I'm learning, I'm working on it, I'm getting better over time. And I think a lot of this is just as we learn to present it better and be better marketing and be able to be able to present complex concepts in, using concise small language that people can grasp. And that that's difficult, but we we learn as we do, and that's what this is about. Well, I don't see any other questions. So thank you so much, Tony, for coming on. Um, if anyone has not heard the podcast interview with Tony, go back and listen to it. I will share a link um, in the follow-up email to that, um, as well as a video to this event. So again, thank you, everyone.